Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kate. This channel is all about faith and motherhood, the intersection of those two things. So today I wanted to continue with my minimalism series and I'll leave the minimalism playlist linked down below. So there's some really old videos on there, some more current ones, but today I just wanted to share with you some simple systems to implement to make decluttering easy with your kids. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly mention the Faithful and Free Motherhood course that's going to be launching in April. I'm super excited to birth this course into the world, but I give all the glory to God. This was a totally Holy Spirit-led course that has been developed over the past two years. I've worked on it very slowly and intentionally to offer the best content possible to you to help you bring you from a place of healing and into hope for the future in your motherhood. It's for you if you're feeling like overwhelmed or stuck or um, distracted in your motherhood, you're feeling like there's maybe more and you're not getting the full potential of the, of the motherhood that you want, that the life that you want for your family, for your kids. And I feel like you might just be here because you're exactly the woman that God has called me to serve. So you can get on the wait list for that. I'm going to leave the link down below. This course is really going to help you move forward in faithful biblical growth to be the best woman, wife, and mother that you want to be, that God designed you to be. I don't want you to be in the pain of being stuck, that busyness, that heaviness, those expectations. Um, I want you to live a peaceful and a joyful filled motherhood so if you're interested in that I will definitely leave the link down below you can get more information there but let's jump right into today's video so we're going to be talking about simple systems to declutter with kids so first the best way to stay on top of clutter and declutter regularly with your kids is to take a system-based approach and simply all a system means is that you do things in the same order on a regular basis that's all a system is I think sometimes we can overcomplicate that and how are we gonna get on top of all of these things but it's just doing something in the same order on a regular basis Next, I want you to establish a timeline for your family. You might have different timelines for various tasks, but what works best for your family? For example, are you going to spend some time every Saturday morning to focus on cleaning up the house and decluttering? Are you going to do this weekly? Are you going to do this monthly? Can you do one room a week? Can you set aside a day once a month to do a deep declutter of the whole house? For our family, we have a weekly system where we focus on smaller things every single week to stay on top of the clutter. Things like paper, broken toys, things that accumulate in the kids rooms to be honest is a lot of it um, and keeping our desk cleared then once or twice a month even we do a deep declutter on a room by room basis so we just simply work throughout all the rooms in our home so I want to share with you the weekly system maybe you can glean a few uh, tips of wisdom here from this but weekly start with the paper clutter paper is one of the easiest things especially if you homeschool like our family it's one of the easiest things that pile up in our home Every week we clear our surfaces of paper. So this is the girls' desks, our kitchen table, sometimes our kitchen counter, those things pile up with paper. Um, my desk, this also includes keeping our bulletin board clean. Um, when the kids do different artwork or different school projects, then we will tack it to our bulletin board. But at the end of the week, we keep it all clean. They will fi I'll file away anything important. They'll file away any artwork that they wanna keep or special school projects. We have a big art portfolio for each of them. They will file it away so that their desks are clean, my desk is clean, any surfaces are cleared of paper, the bulletin board is cleared as well. On the note of paper, having a designated inbox, so I have a little um, wire thing right on the wall where any papers coming, incoming that are like bills or important papers, anything like that, they go right into this wire folder on the wall. This keeps all of our paper clutter into one spot in an inbox. And also if you for some reason cannot do the sort and declutter through all your papers that week, you can simply just throw it into your inbox so that when you have time to it, you can go through it there rather than having papers scattered everywhere. So for moms, dads, any adults watching this, this also includes emptying out your wallet, your purse of any papers that accumulate in there. We can very easily accumulate stuff in our purses and in our wallets. We either lose things or it just gets filled up with junk that we don't want. So once a week in a weekly reset, I make sure to empty out my wallet and my purse file any important receipts so that when I'm trying to consolidate my budget, um, I have it, anything that I need to keep for our ministry, anything that I need to keep for business, it's all filed away weekly. So next I wanna talk about our weekly digital declutter system, and this may vary depending on your kids' ages. But if they have their own device that they use for homeschooling, for example, both of my girls have Chromebooks, if they have their own device, this is the time to remove any downloads, any files that are taking up a lot of space, um, anything like that they don't need anymore that's just causing clutter digitally. 
for moms. This includes emptying out your email inboxes. Every Sunday I go through and I empty out every single one of my email inboxes. I have several ones because we run a ministry, run a business, a personal one. Anyway, I go through all the email, try to get to inbox zero, use folders in your email. It took me a while to start using folders in my email. I would just kind of leave them sitting there in the bottom of my inbox when I had time to get to them. But now I can go through folders and it's so much easier when you dedicate a block of time to go through business emails, for example, or ministry emails, for example, or your school, your kids' school emails, for example. When you have a block of time, you can just quickly go through them rather than having to search and find where you've put things. Use folders upon folders in your email. It is surprising how much digital clutter takes up our mental space. It just affects our ability to work well and stay on top of things digitally. Download a desktop organizer from somewhere like Canva or you can purchase them off of Etsy that other people have created. That is a lifeline for me so I actually organize all of my folders onto, desktop, onto my desktop into categories. This just makes your digital life become so much easier, the flow so much better. So I'm going to leave a free one that I've created down below, you can download that, but there's tons on Canva if you search there, or you can also, like I said, purchase them off Etsy. So there's other ways to stay on top of digital clutter for adults, but this post is really about helping your kids stay on top of clutter and systems to use with your kids, so I'm going to create another video for that. One of my biggest tips when you are looking to lead a more minimal lifestyle is to get rid of as many flat surfaces as possible. This could be extra side tables, buffet tables, like just extra tables that you have. They just become a magnet for clutter. The more surfaces you have, the more clutter you tend to have. So get rid of some of those unnecessary surfaces. Maybe you have an extra dresser in your room. Get rid of it. Setting boundaries on your clutter by simply removing a surface will work wonders. Make it a goal to do dusting weekly. It's a great job for kids, even young kids. That way you know your surfaces are being, anything that's essential on the surface is being removed, dusted, anything non-essential is getting out of there. But if you can limit the surface to begin with, that is a great start. Making sure that everything has a designated home is a huge help. Bins and labels work great for this. I label everything. Even my kitchen cupboards are labeled. My husband might think that's a little bit extreme, but this is how I know everything has a home and we just stay on top of the clutter this way. So if you're wondering if you've removed some surfaces, okay, where am I going to put this stuff that I might need? Maybe it's an inbox or maybe it's uh, a place where you set your keys. Put those things into cupboards and cabinets, but make sure you've emptied out those cupboards and cabinets first of unnecessary things and actually use that space for purposeful things, not just for things that you wanna store that you don't, really don't care about. Another great tip to go along with the inbox is the upcoming box. So if you have something that you know you're going to need upcoming but you're not necessarily using it yet, or simply you don't have a system put in place for it, put it in your upcoming box. A good place for this is a closet near the front door or a little spot in your garage, but keeping it out of regularly used spaces. Think of things like a photo frame that you got that needs to be hung but you don't have the time to get around to it or you need a tool or a nail or something to put it up. A birthday present for an upcoming birthday party, a stack of invitations maybe if you're involved with uh, something volunteer at your church and you have a stack of cardstock invitations that you know you need to hand out but not yet. So anything you know that you are going to need or use in the upcoming month will go in this upcoming box. It's also a great place to store things that you don't want to get broken or you don't want them to get lost, but you just need a place to contain them because they either don't have a home or a system yet or they're going to be leaving the house shortly. So an upcoming box is a great tool, but you don't want to just like throw stuff in there and forget it. You want to check it weekly, make a to-do list with things in there. So for example, hang up that picture frame, get some wrapping paper to wrap that gift that's in there, or go to the office supply store and get those envelopes that you need for those cards that are in there, things like that. So use your upcoming box as a tool and make sure to check it weekly so that you can create to-do lists based off what is in there so it doesn't just pile up and get forgotten about. So the one in, the one out rule, this is a great boundary for kids when it comes to clothes and toys. Remind them around their birthdays, around Christmas or other holidays that they might be receiving gifts and we have our one in and one out rule. This way they can already be thinking about things that they can pass along or sell. We must help our kids be managers of their stuff. They need to be able to take care of things in order to keep them. As I said in one of my other minimalism videos, that's a golden rule in our house. If they can't take care of it, then something has to be done. So having this one in one out rule is a great way to help them become managers of their own things and just to be staying on top of this regularly. I just got five new toys for my birthday party. I need to find five other things to remove so I can make space for these new things. It just really allows your kids to take control when they have this boundary of the one in and one out rule. 
The next tip I have for you is the garbage bag trip. I suggest giving everybody in your house a small garbage bag and set a timer for 10 minutes. Go through the house and throw out anything that is taking up space that is garbage or recycling or simply does not belong in your home and throw it in this bag. If you make it a game, a competition, it makes it go quickly and it allows a little bit of fun into it and it just leaves you with the satisfying feeling that there is no trash left behind in the house. Everybody's done their part. They've run through a quick 10 minutes and removed any trash from the home. So next, and I actually like to do this after the garbage bag trick, is to have a catch-all basket. So after we've removed any garbage, we'll get this catch-all basket and we'll go through and put anything into the catch-all basket that doesn't belong or that is not in its spot. Because sometimes we can waste time if we're like, oh, go put these clothes here and go put that in the kitchen and go run upstairs and do that. But if we just put everything into a catch-all basket, we can then kind of organize the basket and go room to room. So it saves a lot of time um, by putting things back in their spot and keeping things decluttered. It's also another great way to hand this over to your kids. You don't necessarily have to do this, but hey, you're in charge of emptying out the catch-all basket today. Go put all these things away, or at least all the things where they know where they belong, and then maybe there's a couple things left in there that only you know where they belong or whatnot. But it's a great way to give your kids some responsibility over these things and over um, cleaning up as a whole as a family. So I hope those weekly systems were helpful for you. Now we're gonna move into monthly systems. So you're gonna have to decide what works best for your family, but I suggest having a focus. So whether that is room by room, that's a great focus, is to go each month tackle a room, or that's to go category by category. So one month it's clothes, one month it's toys, one month, month it's art supplies. I really like to keep a focus for the month. It really helps to stay on top of clutter. And for us, I like to do it room by room, but that often leads to some overlapping categories. For example, this month is my oldest daughter's room. So as we do a deep declutter in her room, which includes emptying out any drawers, reorganizing the closet, say we're removing some clothes out of her room, I can also take that moment to just quickly look in the other closets. And if there's anything I can quickly grab to add to the clothing donation pile for this month, that makes it really easy to have a little bit of an overlap within your rooms and your categories. Another great monthly trick is simply to walk through your home and take notes. Note any house care items that need to be done or things that need to be moved so that they serve a better purpose or have a better intention. Walk throughout each room in your home and just make a quick note of all of these things. Then you can set a little project list of things you want to get done this month or maybe bigger projects that need to be done this year. Next. And finally, this is more about maintenance, and that is to evaluate your spending habits. You can do all the work in the world, decluttering, organizing, but if you're not maintaining it, you're going to be back at square one with a house full of stuff that you don't want or use. That just ends up leaving you feeling overwhelmed with all the clutter. So really, you need to evaluate your spending habits and what you are bringing into the home. The easiest way to stay on top of clutter is simply to purchase less. Think twice before you hit buy on that Amazon cart. Do you really need that? Stay away from malls and window shopping and the temptation to buy things. Think of a reason you would need something instead of just buying something out of habit. It's one thing to minimize and declutter, but it's a whole other thing to keep it that way. And a lot of the times we put the work in, but we don't put the work in on the side of evaluating our habits and our the way we bring things into our home and the quick purchases we make all the time without really even thinking about it. We need to exercise a little bit of self-control and discipline. Our kids are watching us. If they see us purchasing things without a second thought, that is the kind of purchaser they will become. If you give in to every want, they will be the same. But if they see you practicing self-control, that habit is going to be passed on to them. When you're thinking of buying anything, I just encourage you to remember your pain points. What are things that always have you feeling overwhelmed in your home? Is it Laundry Mountain? Then maybe think twice about buying that shirt. Is it your cupboards are overflowing and you can't get your, on top of your kitchen? Well, maybe you really don't need that extra serving bowl. Simplify your home in any way that you can and then reassess anything else that you're bringing in, whether that's a capsule wardrobe if it's for clothing, whether that's simply simplifying a meal plan so that you have less ingredients and your cupboards aren't overflowing with stuff that ends up going expired. Just like a business owner would do, implement a regular inventory system. What do you have in your cupboards? What do you have in your closets? What do you have in your cabinets? Know what you have in your home so you don't repurchase unnecessary things. Like I mentioned earlier, your label maker is your best friend. Label things so your family members know where things go. When you implement the system, your kids and your husband are going to follow. They're gonna see, okay, this is where all the water bottles go because there's a basket labeled water bottles. Or this is where all the shoes go because there's a basket labeled shoes. Or we all know that they go in this closet. But if there's pain points as far as like, people don't put their shoes into the closet, they just kind of pile them up the front door. Maybe just a basket by your front door is easier. If your kids tend to be drop and go kind of kids and they're not being intentional about using the closet, maybe just a basket there is better and then at the end of the night you can throw that basket into the closet. 
find areas that become natural drop zones and implement systems for those places. So make small habit changes and you will find slowly by slowly that you are going to have less stress and overwhelm in your home because your environment is not going to be overwhelming you with clutter. So I hope these weekly, monthly, and just thinking systems help to get you organized, help to get you decluttered. I'm gonna leave my minimalism challenge linked down below. It's just seven days and gives you something to declutter each day. And also my course linked down below, there's a very detailed section on how to minimize and declutter and just, just a more comprehensive guide to allow you to go through this process and find a little bit of lightness on the other side. So thank you so much for being here today. Subscribe if you are new, I'd love to have you here. Share this video with another like-minded mama so that they can find this community and just find more ease and peace and joy and flow in their life. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much and I will see you on the next one. Bye.